Hey guys, it's Sean from St. Joe. Uh, what we're going to do in this video is a basic autonomous program for teams that don't even know where to get started at. Uh, we're going to try to keep it short and to the point. Uh, we're not going to get into a specifics about how to um, really optimize it, but really just how to get started, how to get an autonomous code going uh, if you're not sure where to start. We're starting from scratch. So now that we have our list of all of the devices that we're going to add, we need to go ahead and clicking on this add devices, set up all of them uh, in our thing. So uh, you have to pick between first and second generation. Uh, what I'm working with today is going to be first generation. I'm going to add a device. Uh, I'm going to add a drivetrain. And I know that my left side drivetrain for my notes is on two. And my right side drivetrain is on five. Now it's important we want to use the gyro and autonomous because it's going to help us guide uh, where to go, and we have that plugged into four. Our wheels are indeed 200 millimeters, uh, and our drivetrain ratio, our gear ratio, is for every one spin, um, we're going to have two on our output. Our, our driving gear is twice as big as our output gear. Click done, that's set up. Uh, we need to set up our touch LED, which is on three. And then we need to set up our arm motors, which is actually going to be put together as a motor group since there's two of them. So our left side is in one and our right side is in six. Uh, because they're on opposite sides of the tower, one's going to be reversed from the other. So I'm just going to arbitrarily choose six to reverse. And I don't know if this is correct yet, but I'm going to call uh, this direction up. And I'm going to call this direction down. We're going to test that. So at this point, we're completely set up. Uh, and because of that, we're going to have a whole bunch of different options here. And looking at these blocks, I noticed that we didn't name our motor group. So we're going to come back in devices, click on that. We're going to change that to arm. So it makes more sense when our blocks are named. Close that. And now you can see this is arm. Uh, now the first block I'm going to add is I'm going to set my arm stopping. And I'm going to have three options, brake, which is just resistance to movement, coast, which is no resistance to movement, and hold, which is going to actively try to hold our arm in position. When we raise our arm up, we want it to, to hold. Um, also, I'm going to go ahead and at the beginning of my code, spin my arm up for, uh, we'll just make it up 25 degrees, because I don't want it dragging on the ground. Uh, now that is going to go through the gear ratio, so it won't actually be a full 25 degrees. We'll see if that's too high uh, as we begin our testing. The other stopping we need to set up is for our drivetrain. So that's going to be here. We're just going to use brake for that so that uh, the robot kind of kind of gets in the same place. Uh, it's not going to coast, uh, but we don't want it to lock up like we would have uh, and hold. Uh, and then the final thing I like to do after kind of my initial code is ran uh, is I like to let it, you know, let the program tell me that I know it's been set up. So we're actually going to turn on the color on our LED uh, and we'll turn it to yellow. Uh, so we know that we're in a state that's ready to uh, to run the program. At this point, we're ready to start kind of doing our autonomous program. Uh, we need a way of initializing that. Now we can, uh, because we set up a touch LED, that's how we're going to run our program. If you don't have a touch LED set up, uh, you could use one of the brain buttons to start your program. You could say when the brain uh, check mark is pressed and then start your program. Uh, but because we have the LED set up, uh, that's what we're going to use. Uh, so you know, we've kind of roughly mapped out what we think we want to do. And we're going to do a lot of the drivetrain blocks here to do that. So uh, just for testing, let's switch over to the inches. And let's say that uh, at the beginning of our code, we want to uh, turn right uh, for 30 degrees and then drive forward uh, 10 inches. Uh, and then at that point, we're going to put in a control code. And we're going to wait. Go to our sensing. I'm going to bring in this LED is touched. Actually, we're going to use, we're not going to use the wait seconds, we're going to use the wait until. So let's pull that out. We're going to do wait until LED is 
touched. Uh, and then we're going to run the code again for our second ball. So let's hit control copy, control paste, and I get the same piece of code. I'm going to pull this away. And now we're going to turn left and do the same thing. So this code is going to, um, you know, when I hit the LED, it's going to turn right. It's going to drive forward. I'm going to reset the robot into a new legal starting position. I'm going to hit the button again, because, and then when it gets sensed that it gets touched again, I'm going to turn left, and then I'm going to drive forward. So let's see what that looks like. So with our, our robot plugged in with the USB cord and our power on our robot, uh, we're going to download our program. There's four different slots that we can download into, and then we can name our project here. So we're going to name our project. We're going to name it Auto Test. You can see that name popped up here after I saved my code. And that's what's going to display on our brain. And I don't want it to go into slot one because that's where we have some driver code. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to tell it I want it to save to slot two. Uh, the brain shows green, so we know that it's up to date. Uh, if it's Different color, you can use VexOS to update your brain. And then I'm going to simply click download. So we're going to start the program. First thing we're going to see is if we chose the correct up direction. Uh, nope, we did not. All right, so we saw pretty quickly that our up and down was reversed uh, on our motor for our arm. So let's go to our devices and our arm. What we're going to do is we're going to reverse both 1 and 6 so that up and down, while still on the left and right, the motor is going to spin in opposite directions. Uh, and then now up will be up and down will be down. We'll re-download and try again. So let's see if flipping those made our motor arm go in the correct direction it's set up. And it does, so that's great. So let's go now test out our code. Hit the LED, it drives forward. The angle looks decent, but it's still trying to drive forward. The 10 inches is too much, and it may not be exactly 10. There's some setup stuff that happens, so take the 10 with a grain of salt. Let's try the left. And it scores, but it's also still trying to drive, so let's change this. I mean, so the real trick here is constantly trying to improve your code and making those adjustments. So we know now that 10 inches is too far, so let's back it off to 6. Our angles are maybe a little bit too big, so we'll back them down to 25 each. But now, let's go ahead and after testing that, let's try to go over towards the corral. So I'm going to copy my wait until block and paste it. You can see that it copied everything that was below it. But now I'm going to turn right for 90 degrees. I'm going to drive forward for, I don't know, 25 inches. We're going to need to lift our arm up. So let's go to motion. Let's spin arm up to position. Let's see, we went to 10 before. Nope, we went to 25 before. So let's just take a stab in the dark. Let's call it 200. And that should be nice and up to allow balls in. And then after we drive forward 25 inches, let's turn. Let's turn left for 45 degrees. And let's see what that does. As always, we gotta re-download. We're just writing over slot two every time we do this. Let's see how our changes affected it. We reduced the angle and the distance on these first two balls. It pops up, great. Hit the start, a bit less, a better angle. Probably still a little bit too far, but we're ready for a reset now. Try left. Ah, yeah, maybe even less angle again, yeah, right? But we scored both balls, which is a great start. Now let's see about going towards the corral. We're gonna hit the button again, it turns 90 right, the arm comes up, nice. And it drives forward, and it's still trying to go, so we're definitely going to have to adjust that, but you can see where this is going. 
Okay, that's it for me. You've got the basics. You know how to set it up in Autonomous. Uh, you know how to set up your drivetrain. You know how to set up uh, your arm and start building those blocks. Write out on a piece of paper what your plan is. You know, maybe copy what you're doing at driver. You know, I know I'm turning right and I'm going forward and I'm lifting my arm and I'm turning left and I'm driving forward again and closing the arm and trying to score. So map out on paper what you want to do with your route and then slowly, step by step, one step at a time, add it to your autonomous program and test. Add one more step, test, and then keep doing the testing at that level till you're satisfied where you're at. And then each time you add another block, do a lot of testing. This is going to take a lot of runs to get uh, to where you're happy with it, I hope. Um, but I think you now have the basic building blocks on how to build an autocode. Good luck. We'll see you guys.